How long will it be until Starship's first orbital flight now? More than days away, but hopefully not many weeks away. Yes, this is the latest timeline from Elon Musk. The SpaceX CEO's timeline is becoming more and more ambiguous. Luckily, this time we can all see that the milestone is finally approaching. Earlier last week, the company lifted the massive super heavy first stage of its launch system onto a launch mount at the pad. The next step will involve lifting the Starship upper stage into place atop the first stage. While these vehicles have been previously stacked for testing, this should be the last time they are positioned on the launch pad before lifting off. In recent weeks, technicians have added shielding to protect the launch mount and tower from the extreme heating from the launch of Super Heavy, which is powered by 33 Raptor engines. The launch vehicle will have about double the thrust of the two most powerful rockets ever to reach orbit, NASA's Saturn V and Space Launch System rockets. With this work largely completed, the focus now turns toward the final significant hurdle standing between SpaceX's massive rocket and a launch attempt, a license from the Federal Aviation Administration. While such regulatory matters are uncertain, a source said good progress is being made toward the issuance of such a license during the first two weeks of April. It also appears that tentatively, NASA is reserving the use of its high-altitude WB-57 aircraft for observations of the Starship test flight on April 10th and 11th. The agency is closely tracking SpaceX's progress with the massive rocket, as it intends to use the Starship vehicle as a lunar lander for its astronauts as part of the Artemis moon missions. It's been quite a long time coming, but SpaceX previously completed a hot fire test of the Super Heavy first stage in early February. At the time, 31 of the rocket's 33 engines ignited and burned as intended, and SpaceX was determined that its engineers had obtained enough data from the test to proceed toward a launch attempt. After that, the booster and upper stage were removed to facilitate work on the launch mount. After it launches, the Super Heavy rocket will fly from SpaceX's Starbase launch site eastward over the Gulf of Mexico. For this test, the booster will not attempt a landing. After stage separation, the Starship upper vehicle is intended to reach orbital velocity before attempting a re-entry into Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. If all goes well, it will make a controlled descent and landing into the ocean just north of the Hawaiian Islands. After a rapid-fire test campaign back in 2020 and 2021 of launching Starship prototypes, the company has moved more cautiously at its development and test facility in South Texas. This is most likely due to the fact that the company has invested over a billion dollars in a massive launch and catch tower to support Starship and Super Heavy, as well as ground systems to support fueling of the massive vehicles. Because so many assets are clustered in a small area near the Gulf of Mexico, SpaceX really does not want to take the risk of destroying the infrastructure it has spent more than a year building and testing. This would set the Starship launch campaign back months at least, during the reconstruction of the area. It would also probably redouble regulatory concerns that were raised as part of the Federal Aviation Administration's process to clear the South Texas location for experimental orbital launches. In any case, SpaceX will put Starship into orbit, whether through baby steps or leaps and bounds, it'll get there. Meanwhile, following an abort delay, SpaceX successfully launched 10 Space Force Tranche Zero satellites and then proceeded to land the rocket. A Falcon 9 rocket topped with 10 spacecraft for the Space Force's Space Development Agency, or SDA, lifted off from California's Vandenberg Space Force Base Sunday at 10.29 a.m. EDT. The rocket's first stage booster then returned to Earth safely, touching down at Vandenberg's landing zone 4 just under 8 minutes minutes after liftoff. This was the second launch and landing for this specific booster, and our 183rd overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket, SpaceX production engineer Jesse Anderson said during live commentary. The rocket previously helped launch a batch of SpaceX's Starlink internet satellites to orbit, according to a SpaceX mission description. SpaceX did not show live views of the launch or payload fairing separation from the Falcon 9 second stage at the request of the Space Development Agency. With the 
company ending its live stream shortly after its booster landing. SpaceX's mission description did not detail when the Tranche Zero spacecraft are scheduled to be deployed. That's not terribly surprising, as details about national security missions such as this one are often hard to come by. We do know a bit about the Tranche Zero spacecraft, however. For example, they are the first members of the proliferated warfighter space architecture, a constellation the SDA will assemble in low Earth orbit. Under the plan, the Space Force will have hundreds of small satellites with new ones launched every few years to increase resilience and capabilities in orbit, Air and Space Forces magazine wrote about the PWSA. The 10 tranche zero satellites cost about $15 million each, the magazine added. Eight of the spacecraft launched on Sunday will relay data, and two will track missiles. Though this first set is intended primarily to demonstrate capabilities that future SDA satellites will make operational. Another Tranche Zero satellite batch is expected to launch in June, according to Air and Space Forces magazine. And for our last update of today, China's space program is getting ready to launch the first satellites of its own broadband beaming mega constellation in an effort that could eventually rival SpaceX's Starlink network. Specifically, the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation already revealed earlier this month that it intends to modify the upper stage of its Long March 5B rocket to release satellites in low Earth orbit. A modified rocket is already in the works and will launch in the second half of 2023 if everything goes according to plan. The goal is to eventually deploy a total of 13,000 satellites, a constellation dubbed Guo Wang, or National Network, which could provide the country with an alternative to Western competitors, including offerings by SpaceX and Amazon. Per Space News, China has been ramping up the production of small satellites, a process that allows the production of hundreds of satellites each year. In the next few years, the Long March 5 series of rockets will be transferred to the high-density launch stage to meet the country's needs for large-scale and rapid access to space. Liu Bing, director of the General Design Department at the China Academy of Launch and Vehicle Technology, told Chinese State News in November. Officials say China is speeding up efforts to deploy its constellation before the completion of Starlink, as Associate Professor Su Kan with the People's Liberation Army's Space Engineering University in Beijing and his colleagues wrote in a recent letter, as quoted by the South China Morning last month. This would ensure that our country has a place in low orbit and prevent the Starlink constellation from excessively preempting low orbit resources. China has already been making use of its Long March 5B rocket platform to deliver a number of modules of its brand new Tiangong space station into orbit. Meanwhile, several other commercial launch companies are already offering to develop rockets capable of launching Guo Wang Mega Constellation satellites. If the country's space program's efforts prove successful, we could be looking at an inflection point for its commercial space industry. The network could give China a significant head start and perhaps even a militaristic advantage. In fact, the country has already reacted with outrage over SpaceX allowing its Starlink satellites to be used by Ukraine's military, with officials arguing that they should have the capability to shoot down the Elon Musk-led company's satellites. Are you telling me that they can't shoot down some satellites because they don't have the capabilities? I don't think it's about not being able to, I think it's more about not wanting to face the ramifications of their actions for destroying property made in the US, but I digress. That's it for today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.